Currently, the number of lab-confirmed active cases sits at 51,157. Of course, we know that due to the current eligibility for PCR testing and expanded availability of rapid tests, the actual number is much higher. What is less likely to be impacted by the testing criteria is our positivity rate, which is currently at 43%. This is still high, but our average positivity has not risen since January the 6th. We are also monitoring the level of COVID virus in wastewater across the province. In most of the centres we're monitoring, COVID-19 levels in our wastewater are starting to drop. In some cases, such as in Edmonton, COVID-19 levels in the wastewater there have been dropping for nearly two weeks. Taken together, these are early positive signs that transmission and new cases may be slowing. However, even though there are early indicators are coming down, our hospitalizations are continuing to increase. Today, there are 1,377 people in hospital who have tested positive for COVID-19, which is an increase of about 30% over the past week. As in previous waves, hospital emissions will lag behind cases. So there's no discrepancy in the fact that cases seem to be start to be going down while emissions at the same time are rising. It means, I hope, we're at a turning point in the current wave and we can start to see the end of it. But make no mistake, the coming weeks are going to be the toughest yet for many Albertans and for the people working in core inpatient units in our hospitals. But admissions follow cases. Once we see a sustained drop in cases, we can expect to be on the downslope in admissions within a few weeks. Now, over the last seven days, an average of 58.6% of new non-ICU admissions and 66.1% of new ICU admissions are directly due to COVID-19. The remainder are patients with COVID-19, where COVID is an incidental infection unrelated to the admission, or it's unclear whether or not it's related. But as we said before, whether patients are in hospital to be treated for COVID or they just happen to be infected, we need to make sure that these patients don't go on to affect other patients or staff. Our hospitals have additional care protocols in place to prevent further transmissions. Those practices take time and resources and add to the strain on our system. That's why, as we announced last week, our government and AHS have activated contingency plans to prepare for the additional burden that Omicron continues to place on our acute care system. These contingency plans include maximizing capacity with pandemic response units, adjusting staffing, and establishing community COVID clinics where appropriate. Our hospitals are under strain, especially in the larger urban centers. Staff are tired, not just from the current wave of cases, but from five waves over two years. We owe them a tremendous debt of gratitude. But I also want to be clear that the health system is there for you if you need it, and it is safe. AHS is still doing around 90% of normal surgery volume. Now, they may have to reduce more, but they'll do it in the most limited way they can and work hard to avoid the kind of reductions that we've seen in previous waves. I'm also pleased to announce today that the first shipments of Paxlovid, Pfizer's at-home prescription COVID-19 treatment, are set to be available to Albertans starting January 31st. Initially, 3,200 courses of treatment will be available as another option, in addition to the antibody therapy we've been using for the past several months to help keep eligible individuals with mild to moderate COVID from experiencing severe illness and ending up in hospital. Paxlovid will be a second option for some individuals and Sotrovimab remains available for Albertans who may benefit from treatment. I know there have been many questions about this treatment since it was approved by Health Canada last Monday and people are curious to know how it can be assessed. Our staff has been working through implementation details in developing guidance for clinicians and pharmacists. 
The short answer is it can and will be accessible for Albertans soon.